Good afternoon, and yes it is afternoon at the time of this recording, this is uh, Friday afternoon, and a beautiful day it is too at the end of autumn, oh really, yes yeah, just as we're coming into winter we're starting to get those cold nights tonight, and I was staring up at the moon last night and I swear I could see my dead sister, you know, smiling down at me, and I was talking to my brother-in-law about handling grief because my, my sister just died in, um, on Good Friday and you know he's pretty overwhelmed by the whole thing and you know my show The Road to Recovery, The Road to Freedom is, is about handling depression and, and tragedy, it's about getting through, it's about surviving, um, you know I've faced a lot of tragedy in my life, lost a hell of a lot of people I loved and um some of them, like Lynn, was just out of the blue, pure accidental. Some of them took their own lives and, you know, it cuts pretty deep. And I said to Brett, Brett that, um, you know, it's, it's like being caught in a storm at sea. You know, you get overwhelmed by these waves of, of grief. They just come up at you from behind and, and seem to overwhelm you. Like we're in the midst of a storm and they just seem to come in waves again and again, recede and, and out of the blue you just seem to be falling apart. And I said, look, you've just got to hang on in there for now. The next few weeks are going to be a hell of a roller coaster. and the main thing is to realise that you've got to weather the storm. I'm not saying that time heals all, but I'm saying you'll find less and less of these waves of out-of-control emotion overtaking you as, as the weeks roll on, as long as you've got people close to you, who you love, who you can trust and rely on. And if you are that person, if you are that support, you don't have to come up with all the answers. Sometimes it's good just to listen, to keep people focused and going down that straight line, Sometimes the less said the better, just a, a few words that you think about real careful before you say anything and um, say things like, are you okay? How are you feeling right now? How you been handling things? And listen, you know, listening is more important than talking when it comes to these types of things. Burden shared is something much more easy to handle than being all alone. And what tends to happen when your nearest and dearest dies is all your friends you feel with the friends are all around you weeping and wailing and carrying on and posing at funerals and whatnot. But after a few weeks, all those fear where the friends fly off and do whatever they do, and you're left all alone and the world gets extraordinarily quiet. You can hear a pin drop, you can hear your own breathing and your heartbeat. And that's when the loneliness sets in and the reality of your life, your new life, begins. And at that point you will find exactly who your friends are because they will never leave your side. They will be there all of the time. They'll be ringing you, they'll be coming around, they'll be getting you drunk and just making sure that you're not alone. And that's the most important thing of all. And if you're not one of those caregivers, think about it. Have I got a friend who's suffering alone? Because alone is, is the hardest, the toughest, the most lonely and desperate. And that's when you start having thoughts of suicide because you want the pain to stop. Not because you want to hurt anyone, including yourself, but because you're so lonely and so overwhelmed by the hurt. So if you've got someone there at your side, it's far less likely you're going to start thinking down that line because before you spiral down that rabbit hole, if your friends can help put you back on track a little bit and give you some positive thoughts. And that's the other thing, to introduce to people positive thoughts. Okay, don't dwell on the negativity and sympathise with the negativity and, and, and feed that. But instead, snap them out of it, knock them on a the right direction, get something small, practical, simple, a fishing trip, a weekend out together out at the beach, something to completely take their minds off things and, and, and get them focused on something happy and positive just for a short period of time. Forget your troubles because, you know, there's a lot of 
financial unraveling and all kinds of horrible, terrible muck you've got to deal with with banks and, and insurance companies, and they don't tend to be very nice people, by the way. You people out there who might be working for those companies, you want to think about showing a little bit more sympathy towards people and treat them how you want to be treated because, you know, waiting on the phone for half an hour and then dealing with someone who's cold and, and you know, difficult is not really a good thing. I mean, at the end of the day, we are paying your wages, OK? The banks, the insurance companies, we, the people who pay the insurance, feed your children. So maybe you want to treat us with a little bit more care and consideration and that would be very nice, thank you. So, back to handling the situation. you also got to realise that life moves on. So once the initial sort of few months, that emotional roller coaster ride, you also, if you, if you are that, that person who's capable, start dropping ideas, you know, just sound out that person about where they want to go in the future and get them looking forward. Otherwise, they are simply going to be lost dwelling in the past and years can take by without them ever getting anywhere, just dwelling in their misery. You do not ever want that to happen because, again, you get that second danger period of just going through the motions and doing nothing all day and sitting in your shed and watching TV and just being lost. So you've got to, after about depending on the person and how they're reacting. Two months, three months in, you want to start talking about where do we go? Where do we go next? What positive things can we do, can we get? And that's where you want to start steering them because the fact of the matter is, no matter how much you love somebody, life goes on. And it's important because they can do other good things for good people and share their experiences, you know, as, as they get over this loss and there is nobody better to help you than someone who's been through it themselves. Experience is the greatest of tutors, you know, and it's unfortunate it is that way, but it is. And also as, as a caregiver, if you want to call them, or whatever term you want to give them, if you are that support person, remember to look after yourself too. Remember that there may come a stage where you're so emotionally invested in this that you're being dragged down and, and your old losses come out to haunt you as well. So you've got to guard yourself and just make sure that you don't get too immersed in this and dragged into this as well. You've got to stay positive, which means you've got to get out there and look after yourself at times and just have a little break away with friends who are not in that circle of, of loss, which is what I'm about to do this afternoon. And that's a good healthy thing to keep you going as well and, and give what you can without breaking yourself trying to pick someone else up and put them back together. Sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you just got to let them fall apart for a little bit. And then when they're ready, it's all about when they're ready, don't try and push people too hard. But don't let them dwell too long. It's a very fine balance that you've got to judge. Where is this person at? Where can I bring them to? Can I just help them with this or that? And celebrate little achievements that you make. You know, make a, a big deal of it without being over the top, but celebrate those little victories during those periods of, of mourning and hardship when people die. That is, that is very, very important that we celebrate those things other people's birthdays and, and Christmases and Easter's and everything. Use that. Use that loss to pull people a little closer together and just make them think and say, you know, it really brings home how much we mean to each other. Just say little things like that. And sometimes, not often, but sometimes, you put thoughts in people's heads like that and it will change them, their attitude towards you and others and maybe they'll get a little bit, you know, retrospective and think that maybe, yeah, well, maybe some of my issues with this person are quite petty and maybe I should just get the hell over it and maybe we could have a better relationship out of this. Maybe some good can come out of tragedy and that 
is really for me what it's all about is is finding some good building something instead of just a loss going somewhere with it finding a new life a new way a new future that happened to me you know i was lost for two years i had no one no one not even the suicide line they didn't answer the phone this is before the days when there was importance on mental health now things are turning around but there was a time when all you heard was the echo coming off the wall and that was pretty much it you were all alone and boy were those desperate years very 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 hard years um cold and miserable and all alone and you know, a lot of people don't know how to take me, so they're offended by me or whatever. And that tends to um, drive people away, but I'm, I'm not trying to curry favour with anybody. I never have been that way. Um, I'm loyal to those who are loyal to me. I look after those who look after me, and I always initiate. But if you let me down, well, you're gone forever. And, and there is no, oh... Oh, I won't do it again, or things will be better, because this is a lie. You are what you are, and unless you absolutely desperately feel inside yourself that you need to change, you're not going to change much at all. There'll just be a little influences here and there, but nobody changes from what they are to something completely different overnight, just like that, because they say they're going to. They're the same person they always were because of all of the influences from your past, your childhood, your parents, your friends. They built you, what you are, what you read, what you experienced, what you thought, what you did. All made the person, the thoughts, the attitudes, the prejudices, the bias, everything was poured into you. When you began, you were an empty vessel. You couldn't even talk, you couldn't even really think very much, apart from I need toilet and I'm hungry and that's about it. So, all of the things that you say, that you think, that you do, are the influences of other people without you realising, and some of them are incredibly subtle. And very few people ever self-analyse and say, why do I do that? Why do I have that habit? What motivates me to do that? And if you think about it long and hard enough, then you'll see how it all happens. Why am I a violent person? Because people were violent towards me. Why am I a thief? Because I grew up with thieves. You know, a lot of people have a lot of influences and you don't really change until you can self-analyse and say, well, I actually hate that about myself, so I'm going to make that change today, tomorrow and forever. And every day that you wake up is today and today you will not be that character that you used to be. Not ever again. And that is a very, very hard thing to make those huge life changes. I've made two or three in my lifetime and made me a different person. I thought a different way, spoke a different way as a result of making massive life changes, which were incredibly hard to do. And not often is there a, a tutor or, or, or a guide or a mentor, but if you can find someone like that, they are very, very good people to have in your life because they have the experience and they will give you ideas you never really thought about. And sometimes you can get a thought that will set you free. I remember this lady, Aruna, I, uh, she's a psychiatrist I used to talk to, and she said to me once, it's going to take as long as it takes and you need to just take it a little bit easier on yourself and realise that. And I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought a lot of my frustration and anxiety is coming out of pushing too hard and trying to do things ahead of time and then failing and collapsing and that's what's happening. And I've just got to try and be a bit more patient. Now, I've got great tenacity and I do have patience, but I get frustrated with myself and because of my critics of the past, I beat up on myself and I become self-destructive because I haven't achieved what I initially set out for. It might not be my fault, but I failed. There's nothing worse for my world than failure. So it's a matter of being a little gentler with yourself, a little kinder with yourself and realise that you're not super man or super girl, that, you know, 
you can do only so much as you can do, but you'd be surprised. You know, don't limit yourself. You can, you can achieve great things if you try, if you believe in yourself. And a lot of it does come down to that self-belief, that strength, that inner resource that you have that is latent most of the time. It sleeps and slumbers and you don't realise how amazing you really are. And each and every person is. They've got it in them. But unfortunately, they dumb themselves down over years. They stop studying, they stop reading. And honestly, the media in this country is worth nothing. I mean, it's just titillation for the masses. Whoever's done the nastiest thing that day gets on the six o'clock news. It's not informative, it's not empowering, it's just a distraction. So if you really want news, watch Al Jazeera and they will tell you what's going on in the world. And isn't it weird that a company out of Qatar of all places has to give us information on what's happening on the Western world and it's quite sad to see and it's not just the West I mean they report on the whole world this channel and it's balanced it's human it's desperately desperately sad sometimes I have to turn it off when I see you know Cities where people have been bombed and hurt so badly, I just I find it tough to take. You know, my heart goes out to them. Having travelled in places like Africa, when I see, you know, uh, what's happening in Sudan and places like that, I really feel for those people and, and the mental trauma, the stress, the depression. You know, we reckon we've got it tough. Imagine what it's like when you're bombed out of your own town and lose half of your family. So we've got to do everything we can for, for not just for the Sudanese, but all of the other people. If we can take in um, refugees from overseas and, and give them a new world and a new life, welcome them with open arms and don't treat them like foreigners and strangers, but treat them like one of us, then, you know, maybe, just maybe, we can help them find a bit of happiness in their life when they've had such tragedy and terrible misery and struggle and hardship to go through you know those people have suffered so badly and um you know we're human at the end of the day we only have one planet and it is our duty our absolute duty to help as many of these folks as we can they would do the same for us You're absolutely certain about that all right we've got about 10 minutes to go so rather than just talk about death which is not a nice subject, but something we really have to deal with. I want to talk about depression in general, okay? Some of the very small things you can do to help yourself through times of depression is give yourself little rewards, okay? And those little rewards are things like a shower. Think about it. Think about that shower, think about being clean, having a shave, getting your hair cut, looking nice, looking good for you. One day a week, have after you've had a shower, I'm not saying have a shower one day a week, have a shower every day please, but one day a week, have a shower, shave if you're a chappy and you shave, um, do your hair nice, put some nice clothes on, and go for a walk and just look real smart and feel real good about yourself and put your shoulders back and your head up. Just one day or even half a day or even an hour if you can manage it and try and make that a regular thing. Also, a meal, right? A real nice meal. Look, a nice, nice meal. One day a week. Do that for yourself. And don't do it on the day you do your walk. You dress up and you walk. Do it on another day. So you've got two days of things to look forward to and you can absolutely anchor your day on that. Oh, tomorrow's dress up day, go for a walk, feel good and think positive thoughts and just break out of, of that constant depression. And those little things, if you make them a regular thing, every single week, every Friday do your walk, every Wednesday do your meal, what it does is it gives you certain points to look forward to and it also has the benefits of giving you discipline, regularity and bit by bit you can add to this and do other things that you like doing. Visit one person on one day and so you you develop a routine, you develop order, you develop uh, discipline, self-respect, a more positive attitude towards yourself. And as I say, it all begins with one. Just do one to start. Don't try and do six or seven damn things at once because you'll fall over. 
wherever you set goals, they have to be A, achievable. That is the most important thing. Do not set yourself up to fail by telling yourself that you can climb a mountain in a day. You can't. It's a step at a time. It's one thing at a time. So one nice thing. And I would suggest a walk thing. And I mean rain or shine. If it rains, you put a raincoat on. And you'd be surprised if you are lucky enough to have some gumboots and a raincoat. Get out in the rain and you'd be surprised how fun it can be sometimes. How refreshing it can be. Yes, it might be cold, but if you wrap up good, you're all good to go. And if you haven't got gumboots and your feet get a bit wet, give them a warm-up when you get home. Looking after yourself breaks you out of depression. And not looking after yourself entrenches and reinforces depression. When you don't care about yourself anymore, how is anyone else going to care about you? But if you do care about yourself, then you allow yourself to be cared by others. Love yourself, you can be loved. Hate yourself, you're only going to be hated. And that's what it comes down to. The reaction of others is a reaction. It requires an action from you first. And if you can just dust yourself off once and then make it a regular thing, you can add on to that work. And should you be lucky enough to be able to work again, you find that if you have a regular routine, a discipline that you do, then you can say to a prospective employer, I have a plan and this is what I do all the time. You know, and you say the word plan. You say, this is how I work on my discipline. They love to hear words like plan, discipline, work, and see that you're making an effort. You're not just sitting there feeling sad for yourself and expecting someone else to come along with a plate and give it to you. There you go, there's the job. If you are already thinking positive, moving positive, when you are ready to get that job, you are far more likely to succeed at it because you are already moving. You are already moving in the right direction. Also, if you do get to that point, where you're starting to come right a little bit. If you can't work, then there's lots of other things that you can do that are very positive. For example, a community radio show. Get on the air. Tell people your experiences. No matter how tough they might have been, other people can benefit from realising that they're not the only one, that you've toughed it out, you've been through it, and hey, look, you're alive, you're positive, you're saying positive things where... I have every right to be miserable right now, but I'm not. I'm there for everyone else, and not because I'm the strongest. Not by a long shot. It's because I've been through this and I know what it's like, and that's the difference. I don't have sympathy with people, I have genuine empathy. And if you can give that to somebody, then that can make them a whole lot better, and that makes you a better person, it makes you feel better about yourself, but it actually makes you a better human being too. And helps you grow by helping others so you know writing as well I find writing very cathartic you don't have to show it to anybody it's for you sometimes it's good to jot down your feelings sometimes if they're negative poisonous feelings write them big and large and angry then screw it up and burn it and put it behind you if it's positive and really neat hell frame it and put it up on the mantelpiece somewhere and read it occasionally And, you know, those good thoughts will come back to you. So these are just techniques that I use. Other times, I'm not quite there. Other times, I'm just not up to making that great meal. And in those times, what I do is I just have a tin of spaghetti on toast. That's what I used to eat when I was a kid. It's kind of like a comfort food for me. I don't do it often, but I say to myself, I'm hungry. Ah, spaghetti on toast. And it only takes five, ten minutes to knock up, and it's a feed in your belly. If you're going to bed hungry at night, it's you're not going to feel that positive about yourself. So looking after yourself is the first step to recovery. It is the turning of the corner when you begin to care again. And that makes all the difference in the world to you and to others. Well, that's my show for another day. I'll tell you what... 28 minutes wings by so fast. I hope it's been of help to some people someday and 
maybe I've touched one or two hearts there. I know that there's a lot of people out there who are suffering, and I just want you to know you're not alone. So, in conclusion, I just want to say thank you very much to all the sponsors, New Zealand On Air and Tense Trust, all, all the wonderful sponsors that support Arrow Radio. Most of them are trusts and things like that because community radio stations have always been seen as a poor cousin to the commercial stations and this is a bit of a backwater and it's anything but. I would suggest to you that community radio stations are far more important than, than people trying to sell you whatever garbage they are on those ads. You know, we here do this for our communities, not for reward. I don't get paid. This costs me to do money. And I'm on the rock and roll, my friend, so I have to go without other things to do this. You know, I never make any money of my writing, and nor do I ever intend to. You know, I've got three books ready to go, and... Maybe you'll read them one day. I hope you do. I reckon they're pretty good stuff. There's some pretty entertaining stories in there make you laugh. So, you know, it's them. We don't get a lot of private donations. Two people that work here, uh, Michael and Veronica, they just do an outstanding job. They're wonderful people. They care so much about everything that's going around, and they work so hard. They're so dedicated um, there's an enormous amount of, of paperwork and nonsense that goes here, lots of hurdles for them to jump, they struggle to survive, and yet they never give up and they always try and do positive work and, and help other people who would otherwise never have a voice, people like me. So, Michael and Veronica, thank you for all your support over the years. What a rapid TV, great to have you on board. An awesome, awesome thing, promoting the wire wrap of the community but don't don't forget the hawks bay all you lovely people out there we're you're always on our minds and wherever tragedy strikes you know we're we're here to help we're always there we're your neighbors and um so thanks to everyone who supports us and makes it happen um if you've got a business or you know someone who's got a bit of coin you know support is always welcome a show like mine costs about, I think, something in the vicinity of 120 a month. They, they let me do it for free, but it sure would be nice to have a sponsor on board and think, well, some business out there cares about their community more than money. That that would be really just so awesome. So, yeah, look, I, I missed last week because of the tragedy and I hope to just keep on keeping on now. So, you know, God willing and... and Everyone else willing will turn up next Friday and do it all again. So for now, thank you very much for tuning in. Share what you hear on this show with other people. Take on board some of the stuff I say. Give it a go. Works. Thanks for tuning in. And think about each other this week. Bye for now.